Hi, uh, this is Bill from HowToLanguages.com and I'm here with this follow-up video. Um, got a lot of responses to my my previous video where I kind of briefly went through some of the major language learning courses and um, so I'm gonna I'm doing this video as a uh, was a more in-depth, a deeper dive into uh, the Pimsleur system, which is kind of, uh, seems like it's always a big debate amongst the language learning community. Um, some absolutely love it, some absolutely hate it. Um, there's quite a few others um, who don't really know anything about it because they're too scared really to try. I've heard terrible things about it, it's all audio or what have you. So basically this is to, uh, I'm going to explain Pimsleur from beginning to end, uh, and you can find out, figure out for yourself if it's uh, if it's for you or not. Uh, I'm a big Pimsleur fan. I used it. I've used Pimsleur for uh, German, for uh, Spanish, and for my Mandarin Chinese, and I have no complaints. So, well, I have some complaints, but we'll we'll get to that in the uh, the con section. So, uh, basically, a little background. Um, Pimsleur is an uh, all audio based um, language acquisition method. It was developed by uh, Paul Pimsleur and uh, tries to encourage uh, active participation rather than rote memorization. Um, and that's sort of debatable because it is a listen and repeat course. Um, although it's, uh, it is engaging uh, in several ways. Um, Number one, the uh, the course does have a dialogue at the beginning uh, of every lesson, and that dialogue includes words and phrases that you either have used in previous lessons or are going to learn in, in that particular lesson. Um, it's repeated a couple of times without any involvement from you, just to, to kind of hear it spoken, get the hang of it. Um, and then it's fairly active after that, and it'll say something like, um, tell the woman that you do not want to eat lunch at her house at 12 o'clock. And then you, it, it gives you a, a gap, you say it, and then a native speaker speaks it afterwards so you know whether you're right or wrong, and you get to hear that constant reinforcement of accent. Um, the, uh, the Pimsleur people recommend that you get 80% of the lesson correct, that you have it 80% down uh, before you move on to the next lesson. I found oftentimes that involves two or three repetitions. Um, sometimes when it gets more complicated, three or four. Uh, but I've never had to review uh, any lesson more than four times. So um, it's made up of 30 minute all audio lessons. Um, so, and they're most, uh, the, the larger languages have uh, three or four levels. Um, each level is 30 lessons, except for, I believe, the level four on most languages that have a level four, which are the really big ones like German and Spanish and French. Uh, their level four, I think, has 10 or 15 lessons on it. Um, but the, most of them have three levels uh, with 30 lessons in each level, so 90 total. Um, some of the lesser known languages, uh, lesser studied languages, like uh, I believe uh, Romanian and um, Cantonese, um, Twi, uh, those kinds of things, have uh, just just one level, so 30 lessons. But um, most of the, the mainstream languages have three levels, which is 90, which is 45 hours of audio, which is, is quite a bit. And uh, they recommend one course per day. Uh, I have known people who've done more. Uh, with Spanish, I did three per day because I already had a reasonable foundation in Spanish. I was just kind of using Pimsleur to make sure that, you know, fill in any holes or anything like that. But um, So basically that's, that's the course in a nutshell. Um, the the thing that makes Pimsleur unique, uh, he has four principles he, he, that he claims uh, are important to uh, forming memory associations on uh, language recall. 
those three things or those four things. Um, number one is anticipation. Um, basically, what uh, that is is it leaves a gap for you to answer the question. So it'll say, um, "Please ask where is Goethe Street." So you would say, "Wo ist die Goethe Straße?" And then, because there's a pause there, and then the native speaker says, "Wo ist die Goethe Straße?" And you, so you hear it, you know whether you got it right, uh, but it does ask you to actively participate. So, and it's it's a fairly small interval; they don't give you a whole lot of time. So it it does kind of become fun. It kind of becomes a competition of, you know, okay, I'm going to say the next one. I'm going to get it before, you know, b before the native speaker comes on and tells me. And that that's very effective because it it puts you on the spot, and uh, it's it's very active. So it does encourage active skills. It encourages speaking absolutely. And so I think that's that's great. The anticipation is is fantastic. That's probably my favorite part of Pimsleur. Um, the second thing is uh, what they call graduated interval recall, which um, is basically like a spaced repetition. Um, what it does is Pimsleur claims to have um, developed the optimal uh, intervals to hear words and remember them. Um, so it'll teach you a word and then five or ten seconds later it'll ask you again about that word and then maybe 30 seconds later it'll ask you again related to that word and then it'll wait a few minutes and then it'll wait 10 minutes and then on the the next lesson it may mention it once and then it'll mention it again three or four lessons down the road there's um i think the pimsleur memory schedule i think is uh five seconds 25 seconds two minutes 10 minutes an hour uh, five hours, one day, 25 days, and then there's some months after that. But um, it doesn't follow it exactly because it, it really can't because it's only half an hour lesson, so it can only hit the beginning ones. But um, if you do listen to it two or three times, uh, you probably will hit all of those intervals. So um, that's kind of neat. I don't know uh, the, the exact science behind it. Um, it seems to work. Everything that I reviewed in uh, that, everything I learned from uh, German, Spanish, and Chinese is automatic. I mean, at, somebody asks me to say something from those courses, and bam, it almost works too well. Um, I was listening to uh, Chinese Pimsleur the other day, and it asked me a question. I blurted out in German because I'm just so trained in, in it. But, um, they stick. They absolutely stick. You be. Um, it is probably the the best vocab that I have. The most automatic phrases that I have are all from Pimsleur. So that definitely works. Um, the next, the uh, the third thing that Pimsleur claims uh, about their method is uh, teaches a a core what it calls a core vocabulary, and um, it's based on they they say it's based on frequency uh, frequency list. And they claim that they average about 500 words per level per 30 courses. Um, that's very debatable. Uh, German was pretty close to that. I think it ended up at like 13 or 1400 words total over the course of the four. So that's close to 500 per level. Um, Mandarin was 513 words through all 90 lessons, all three levels, so it didn't even come close to the 500. Uh, but they are very useful words. They, uh, I do, I do agree with Pimsleur that um, that that they do make a good core vocabulary. Um, so, they uh, the other uh, the fourth thing is uh, they call organic learning, and basically it's uh, they claim that um, auditory skill. Uh, through hearing and speech is uh, is a totally different skill from reading and writing, and they call auditory um, the auditory system is organic learning, uh, which basically entails uh, grammar, vocabulary, and pronunciation all at once. Um, they do not really teach any explicit grammar. Um, they expect that it you pick it up over and over the course of forty five hours. That's not 
uh, you do pick it up. Um, I don't ever recommend using Pimsleur by itself uh, because at some point you are going to need, uh, really want that um, that grammar study that uh, the the instead of just hearing the right thing, you want to kind of know why you're hearing the right thing, and um, and in that they they fall pretty short. So. Um, but otherwise, the, uh, the, the core vocabulary you learn very well, um, and uh, the, the accent that you get from it is always excellent. Um, I have gotten uh, quite a few compliments from native speakers on uh, my German accent and my, my Chinese accent, my Mandarin Chinese accent. Um, my Spanish accent isn't fantastic. It's okay. Um, Pimsleur didn't do much with that because I already kind of, uh, already kind of fossilized my my Spanish accent. So uh, it probably improved a little bit, but not not noticeably. Um, that's a big reason why I recommend that people start uh, with with Pimsleur as one of their first courses because it does teach. Um, it teaches the accent very, very well. Even if you only go through the first 10, 15, 30 lessons uh, and then decide to stop after that because, you know, it's too boring or what have you, um, it, it does help you solidify a, a very good accent. So, um, so that's good. So basically to sum up, uh, pros of the, uh, the Pimsleur program is uh, that it, it, it works. Uh, as far as the uh, the vocabulary and the sentences, you you will not forget. Um, that's so ingrained in my brain. Twenty years from now, I'm still going to remember. I'm still sometimes spout out German sentences from Pimsleur two years ago. So um, what you learn, you learn. You learn very well. Um, number two is uh, that. Uh, it gives you an excellent accent, a very, very good accent, uh, which is a great basis in the language. Anyone who has uh, read much at HowToLanguages.com or knows me knows that I'm really focused on accent in the beginning uh, because I don't want to fossilize a bad, bad accent. Those are the two big pluses. Um, the third plus, the third big pro for me is it's an all-audio course. Uh, I love audio courses. That's not necessarily the case with everybody, but I'm a very auditory learner. So, um, so that's kind of my, my personal pro. Um, cons are, uh, it, it, it is a translation. It's translation based. So, uh, anyone who is trying to avoid translation all, all the way around, which is kind of a, a push with some, some polyglots these days, uh, learning and thinking and everything in the native language, solely, you know, using pictures and flashcards, that kind of thing. This is probably not good for, for that. Um, number two, it, it is dead boring sometimes. Um, it's, it can be a struggle. You really have to be motivated about the language because, um, the recording is, is not going to encourage you. It's not going to be motivating in and of itself. It's, uh, it's very dry. It is. It can be very, very boring. Um, but the uh, the core of what you're going to learn, and and as far as your accent goes and everything, is in the first thirty lessons. It's in the first uh, the first level. If you just do the first level of a language, you're probably fine. Uh, I just did the first level of Chinese, and I'm probably not going to pursue uh, any more. I'm, I'm going to move on to uh, living language and teach yourself and. Um, a couple things like that, uh, but um, so that's that's two two cons, uh, and the third con will be the same as my pro. It is all audio, so there are quite a few people who just need to see something in writing in order to really retain it. If that's the case, this is this is probably not uh, the course for you. Although I'd still recommend it, even just a few lessons, uh, just to to nail down the accent. The, the, I'm such a firm believer in, in accent training in the very beginning of a language, but, um, 
So those are kind of the three cons. Uh, the, the fourth con, I'm going to go ahead and mention uh, a fourth con here. It is very expensive. Very, very expensive. Um, it's like 200 something dollars for each level. Um, it's more expensive probably than it is useful. Uh, however, I know my library in particular, and I know I've heard quite a few other people um, on the internet talk about their libraries are, uh, do have usually a pretty good selection of Pimsleur. So, um, you get it for free, it's, I mean, cost is not an issue at that point, that becomes a pro. Um, but just going onto the Pimsleur website and ordering uh, a Pimsleur lesson is, is, it's expensive. Um, if your library doesn't have it, uh, I'd probably recommend instead of just going out and buying, you know, the $250 course, maybe, uh, they, they do sell them online for, uh, just by lesson, so you could buy four or five of them, see if you like it. If you do, buy a six and a seven, and then kind of keep going. That way it's almost kind of like a monthly payment plan, sort of, um, but you could get the, the MP3s from their site. So uh, I hope this was useful. Please let me know in the comments below um, if you think it's useful. Uh, I plan on doing a similar one to this for uh, Living Language, um, Teach Yourself, SML, um, and I don't know, maybe uh, some some other course that that I that I like. But um, don't forget to subscribe uh, for videos like this uh, if this is your thing, then uh, definitely stick around. So again, this is Bill Price from HowToLanguages.com, and uh, thanks for watching.